So the fourth option is the real-time avoidance of market news. What this entails is making trading decisions to exit trades in specific instruments before any significant market news that might affect that instrument is released. So for example, if the UK is about to release an interest rate decision, then this could affect any GBP currency pair. So in this instance, you'd exit any of those pairs that you had open trades for maybe 10 minutes before the news hits and also prevent any new ones from opening until the price action has stabilised following the news. Now you'll notice that I said before that you'd only do this for significant news. As you know, news events tend to get categorised in economic calendars as either low, medium or high impact. And I'm only talking here about high impact news. In my experience, medium and low impact don't usually have any significant effect on price action that we need to be very concerned about. The great thing about this option is that it can be used in your backtesting process to avoid events overfitting, but can also be used in live trading. So once you've coded it, you can have like for like behavior across both use cases. Now I actually have a confession to make here. I did code this functionality about six or seven years ago and I used it as part of my backtesting approach, but I actually stopped using it. Why did I do this? Well, let me explain. But first, you have to understand that at that time, I simply didn't have the same level of understanding that I have now. So I saw the effect where the performance appeared to degrade when filtering out news. And this led to a decision to throw the technique away and just trade through news. So for example, here you can see the, the blue equity curve that was from the, let's say, the best performing parameter values. And then as soon as I started to filter out that news, I get something like the green equity curve you see below it. So you'll probably see exactly why this happened based on what I've said so far about events overfitting. But let me just explain my current understanding of this so that we're all aligned. As you know, when you perform an optimization, you'll have the best performing parameter values producing the equity curves up here and the worst producing equity curves that may well lose money and then everything else in between. So you get this cone shape. Now, what happens as soon as you start to filter out those news events is that the cone decreases in size. So you have this instead of this. And if you think about it, this makes absolute sense because these values in blue that perform very well are probably performing well because they've been positively affected by news events. They've been positively affected by events overfitting. Whereas the poorly performing equity curves that we can see down the bottom here are probably there because they've been negatively affected by events overfitting. So it's the very nature of the fact that this effect has taken place that means you have a relatively large cone. And of course, as soon as you take that away, that effect away by taking those trades out of the equation, you get this much smaller equity curve cone, which represents the true performance of the system. Now in my naivety, whenever it was six, seven years ago, this was what I saw as just a, a detrimental thing to the system. So it made the system perform worse. But of course, what it is doing is giving you that true reflection of the system's performance. And unfortunately, this led me to stop using this particular technique, even though intuitively it felt like the wrong thing to do. But of course, what it would have done is make the whole process of parameter selection so much more effective if I had continued with it. Anyway, as algo traders, we're on a journey and the learning and the self-development never ends. You just keep on improving. So. It was about 12 months ago when I finally realized what had actually happened here. And so this is something that I've now put back onto my development roadmap 
I will, however, do it differently next time than I did back then. Back then I used to manually download the economic news week by week because that's all you could do back then. And then I saved that as a CSV file that got read into the EA and then action was taken to exit trades at the appropriate time. This time I think a far better approach will be to ideally use a web service or API to automatically get the data day by day as it's required, either in the backtesting context or live trading. So the same code meets the requirements of both use cases. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time yet identifying a source of data, but if you have any good reliable services that you already use, then please post details in the comments below and that way we can all benefit as a community of algo traders. And also don't forget what I asked you earlier on regarding the coding tutorials. So if, as I go through this particular series, it would make sense to run sessions about coding techniques to put into practice the theory that I've been explaining, then I'd also like to hear your opinions. So please comment below, and this will help inform me about the order that I deliver my content. And lastly, while you're making those comments, please remember to give me a like, and please do share this video on Twitter, Facebook, and any other forums that you tend to use. And this would be very, very much appreciated. That's all for this week. Next week, we'll be looking at technique number five, which revolves around how to avoid noise overfitting. So until next week, trade safe.